Good afternoon, welcome to the Mayor's Corner. Uh, today we're gonna be talking about the Methuen High School project and I would like to, as always, uh, thank Karen Hayden, uh, director extraordinaire for all her hard work in the booth. Is she in there by herself today? I, it's Karen, are you by yourself in there? No, she is not. Okay, there, oh, there we go. <laughs> all right, thanks to MCTV. Uh, today we're gonna be talking about the Methuen High School project and I would like to introduce my guests uh, certainly not in order of importance. Uh, we'll do that in the reverse order uh, and start with Gino Baroni. Uh, Mr. Baroni is you, the man. owner's project manager for Methuen High School uh, Project. Uh, Arthur Nicholson uh, needs no introduction and Arthur continues his work uh, with the High School Building Committee uh, acting as the educational liaison. And of course, Suzanne Lamoureux, uh, who is our building committee chair and uh, who has to put up with me on a uh, daily basis. Mm -hmm. Yeah, let's talk about, I guess, right from the start, uh, starting with you, Arthur. Um, why do we need uh, a new high school? Why do we need a renovated Methuen High School? Well, thank you, Mayor. And first of all, I want to thank you for your, all your efforts on behalf of this project. I mean, you've really spearheaded the effort and and uh, it's been sorely needed in, in the community, and, uh, and I want to thank you for that. But beyond that, uh, having been in the school system now 43 years and, and um, you know, been at the high school since it was built yes. <laughs> back in the uh, fall. We actually we got in in the fall of 75, and um, it was a beautiful building. However, you know, we've been in there 34, 35 plus years, and uh, and uh, it was an open concept design, which was in vogue back then. Uh, it really hasn't worked out the way we wanted it to. Uh, I think we're the last of the high schools to, uh, that were built as an open concept uh, to still be open. And, uh, and then, of course, we have the, uh, the science labs in, in science classrooms that's been a real issue. Uh, the New England Association of uh, Schools and Colleges have uh, visited in 93 and in 2003. In each, of, in each of their reports, they indicated very clearly that uh, we were deficient in that area and in, in, in what have you. Uh, technology is another issue. And uh, so really there's three major reasons why we, we really uh, needed this renovation addition. And it's primarily the open concept. The, the science labs and, uh, and then the technology. So uh, uh, we're very excited about this. Uh, the staff has worked very hard over the last two years to come up with an educational plan that's gonna meet the needs for kids in the 21st century. And, uh, and I am certainly excited about it. And, uh, and I, again, Mayor, I can't thank you enough for all you've done. Well, Arthur, uh, how long uh, were you the principal at Methuen High School? Well, uh, in total, 15 years. As principal? As principal. But associated with the high school? Oh, my whole career. Your whole career. Yep, yeah, yeah, 40 plus years. Right. And uh, it's, uh, it's been wonderful. And, uh, but I, this is gonna really put us where we need to be and, uh, and to provide for the needs of our kids. Yeah. And, uh, and well, I appreciate the work that you continue to do, um, and we're gonna come back and talk a little bit more about the educational piece, but um, one of the questions that, that we all get, and it's a, a question that uh, we, we have some fun with, but um, we're in a new process now, and the new process is run by the uh, School Building Authority, relatively new, um, designation at the state level, uh, no longer that this Department of Education uh, put these schools together, and I think mostly that's a good thing. Um, but some of the new rules uh, include the requirement for an owner's project manager, and even though we tease Gino a lot about it, we, we, uh, uh, I think it's one of the big, big improvements that the state has uh, enacted through this new authority. Um, and I can tell you already, even though we're not at uh, a construction phase. Uh, the difference, I think, between uh, our preparation <clears throat> and the preparation we had, respectfully, uh, when we put the three grammar schools together, is like night and day. And, and I think that's because of the inclusion of an owner's project manager. Gino, um, what does generally an owner's project manager do? And you know, people do ask that. I'm sure you hear it all the time. 
Um, but what does an owner's project manager do? What are the responsibilities? And what are the benefits to having an owner's project manager on a project? It's a relatively new concept uh, in New England. It's been around a long time in the country. It was uh, legislated in 2004, especially for state projects over 1.5 million. There were certain inefficiencies back uh, prior to that time that the state decided they didn't want to go through again because it was costing taxpayers money. So an owner's project manager briefly advises the owner facilitates the process and allows the ownership, the district, the city to make informed decisions, cost-effective decisions, to shepherd the process through to make sure it's time effectiveness, cost effectiveness, and really to make sure nothing stalls, nothing is left by the wayside, no stone is unturned. So our expertise in both design and construction oversight really helps the process go along. Right. Can you, uh, um, and I know it's not directly related to Methuen, but um, t tell us uh, some of the projects that you've been involved in personally. Uh, I know that you have a, a, a storied career here, but um, and, and I want to ask you a question that I know you hear all the time, but what projects have you been involved in in, in the construction phase? We've had uh, some uh, really uh, signature projects throughout my career. We did uh, Rose Wharf in Boston. We did terminal, terminal A expansion at Logan Airport where we had to uh, renovate, I'm sorry, demolish and build a new facility in an existing airport. We've done Gillette Stadium. Uh, uh, so we've done very, very complex, sophisticated projects. We've also done very smaller projects, so I'm not to say they're only the mega projects. We've done uh, boys and girls clubs and things of that nature. So it's not the size of the project in particular, it's the complexity, and it really is our advice on how to proceed in the project for, for owners that really don't have the in-house capacity to do so. Okay, now let me ask you something that I know that you hear all the time, and you'll laugh when I ask the question, but uh, uh, owners, project managers, architects? Uh, absolutely not. Okay. <laughs> Neither are we clerk of the works. Yes, that's, that's the second <laughs> part of that question. Yes. Um, but you're not architects, so let's talk a little bit about the interaction between an owners, project manager, and an architect, because uh, we are very fond of our architectural firm, uh, we're very happy with them, but uh, as you know, under the prior system, DOE, essentially the architect was serving a, a dual purpose that I think does not uh, bode well for the community in, right. in terms of uh, construction oversight, and when there's a problem, I think that we get bogged down the last time honestly, mm -hmm. no reflection on the architect, right. but I think that the system was unwieldy. So. What's the relationship between an OPM and an architect? I get that all the time. Yeah, the architect definitely is a, is a professional organization, so I'm taking nothing away from them. But their expertise is in design and maybe some construction administration. The only entity that really can reserve and preserve the neutrality of a project for the owner is an owner's project manager. We're your representative. All we want to do is make sure that the ownership gets the best possible design, the best possible construction in the most efficient time. So the relationship we have is a team builder, a facilitator, to make sure the entire team moves ahead. No one can be left behind. We're not here to make anyone look bad. There's no one-upmanship going on. It's really to bring everyone together in the process so at the end we all have a successful project. Everybody has to win. And it has to be a reasonable, a reasonable but I say straightforward and uh, detailed process but everyone has to get to the end saying this was a good job, it was well managed, and we all made some money here. That's 